Look for character more than physical beauty. And the best place to observe character is not in a date. Do you know when you're in a dating, you're always putting your best on the plate. In Ireland, many people go this, ah, you know, I had a dream, pastor, that I'm married to that brother. I had a dream that I'm married to that sister. Well, wonderful. You know what that means? It's not marriage. I want to thank you for stopping by to watch this YouTube sermon. I believe your life will be deeply impacted by the truths that are in this message. Remember, the Word of God is like seed which God gives to us. Seed from heaven which brings God's life, power and wisdom. And as you receive these truths into your heart, it has the power to transform your life completely. Can you also do a favor for us? Can you please like this video and send the link to a friend whom you know will be blessed through this. And if you are not a subscriber yet, would you please subscribe to this channel so that we can reach more people. God bless you as you watch this message. Hallelujah. All right, let's go on. Point number six, the presence of willingness. Genesis 24 verse 8. Abraham said to the servant, if the woman is unwilling to come back, then you are released from this oath of mine. Only do not take my son back there. Verse 57, the family of Rebecca says, let's call a girl and ask her about it. So they called Rebecca and asked her, will you go with this man? Now notice, they did not say, go with this man. Because this man came with 10 camels of jewelry, 10 camels of clothes, 10 camels of goods. Abraham was a very rich man. Despite all the wealth, they asked the daughter, do you want to go with this man? Do you want to marry Isaac? And you know what she said? I will go. What does this mean? It means this. There must be present willingness on both sides. Willingness. Both must be willing. Which means there need to be some kind of mutual attraction on both sides. Don't just marry for money. Don't just marry for job. Don't just marry for family pressure. There need to be some mutual attraction because when you are married for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, it's not the money or the job that keeps that marriage. It's your willingness to love one another. And in that willingness, there need to be some mutual attraction. That means you must find her pleasing, her mannerism, her way of dressing, her personality, and him likewise. It's more than just the physical and more than just the gifts that they have. There was an evangelist that really, really wanted to have a big ministry. And he thought, for me to get a big ministry, I need a very, very beautiful singer who will come and sing before I preach. Because, you know, Billy Graham's crusades, always somebody comes and sings, and then Billy Graham comes and preaches. So he thought, hey, I need a beautiful, beautiful woman who can sing, have a great voice. But she could, he could not find anyone who had that quality, beauty and voice. So ultimately, he had to settle only for a voice. <laughs> so there was someone, she wasn't beautiful, she wasn't good looking. He did not really find her attractive, but he compromised based on just her voice. Oh, her voice. Oh, if I close my eyes, my, my heart just connects with heaven. And the people are just so touched by her voice. So he decided to get married to her. But he realized his mistake on the wedding day. So the next morning, he was like, what did I do? Turn to see her on the wedding bed, just like, ah, oh, yeah. So you know what he said? Honey, can you sing? Because the only way I can stay with you is if you sing. <laughs> so now the wife has to sing every day. So there must be some mutual attraction. Now, when I say this, understand this. In Nagaland, we over-spiritualize. Because we're always this, ah, oh, pastor, I really want to do God's will. So, I'm waiting for the right one. So, you go too much on dreams and visions and prophecies, okay? If God gives you a dream that you are married with someone, that does not mean he or she is your future spouse. In fact, in the majority of dreams, if you are seeing a dream where you're marrying someone, it does not mean marriage. Because in dreams, 99% of the dreams are symbolic. So, in Nagaland, many people go this, ah, you know, I had a dream, pastor, that I'm married to that brother. I had a dream that I'm married to that sister. Well, wonderful. You know what that means? It's not marriage. So you pray, better pray and ask the Lord what it means. Don't go to the other person and say, hey, sapna de tuike paishe. You have to get married to me. So don't put pressure based on dreams, all right? Don't put pressure based on prophecies. Prophecies that could come from people 
that you have received. You know, people say things, you know, it's God's will for you to be married to that woman. And if you don't, God will curse you. People have come and told me after having marriage problems. The, way I, the reason I got married is because prophecy de paishe. I did not want to displease God, so we got married. Now we're fighting every day. The prophecy will not preserve your marriage. It's the faith and the love with which God will develop in your hearts. Amen? So do not be manipulated by prophecy. In fact, prophecy should not go into the area of marriage. Marriage is between two persons who say, I will. The prophet is not going to be staying with her and tolerating all that she has or him, right? So even if you get a prophecy, it's your choice and your will. And let me tell you this, God will never force you to do something against your will and your desire. But do not be manipulated by words that come from prayer warriors and so-called prophets. Isaac was willing, Rebekah was willing, even though the other persons initiated. There was a Bible school once, somewhere in Siliguri, and after one month, this man came up to this woman and said, you know, I've been praying about you for a month. And I've been seeing you in my dreams so many times. I truly believe you are supposed to be my future spouse, my future wife. Because in dreams, he's been getting her, getting married. So a woman told this man, oh really? Please let me go and talk to my husband first. And then I will come back with a reply. <laughs> she was already married. So don't over-spiritualize. God has given you wisdom from the Bible. Use wisdom soundly. And let me ask you this, let me tell you this, choose with practical purposes in mind. Keep it practical. Let prayer be a part of it. But practical, sound, common sense, you need to use in order to choose wisely. Okay, does God have a perfect one for me? Again, this is another myth in Christian circles where we are like, Pastor, I'm just waiting for the right one, the right one. So, all the men are waiting for someone like Esther and all the women are waiting for someone like David, someone like Joshua, right? Listen, is there such a truth to this belief that there is a right one for me and I'm waiting for the right one? How many of you are waiting for the right one? Can I see your hands? If this theory was true, that there is one right person in the billions of people out there, there is one right person. Because sometimes you see it in romantic movies. They met on the train, they met in Paris, they met in Delhi, they met in a wedding. Wow, it was amazing. So we are thinking about that same, oh, I wish it would happen to me. So we romanticize too much that, that, that feeling, that some enchanted evening, someone may be laughing. We are, we, are so, we are so wrapped up in that idolatry of emotions, not realizing that marriage is very, very decisional means 99% of the times your feelings are not involved. It's your commitment to the covenant and the vow and the promise that you made. There is no right one for you, guys. There is no right one. There's not just one perfect one. There isn't. So if you're waiting for that right one, it will never come. I'm telling you the truth. It's in the Bible. Rather, the Bible gives you the choice to choose the right one based on your wisdom on the availability wherever it is look at these verses numbers chapter 33 verse 6 this is what the lord commands concerning the daughters of zelophehad saying let them marry whom they think best the choice is yours choose who you think is good for you based on your common sense but they may marry only within the family of the father's tribe but the boundary is this marry within the tribe and your tribe is christianity when i say christianity not the cults huh? Don't bring Jehovah's Witness, Church of Almighty God, Mormons in this church. We will not marry you. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 39. A wife is bound by law as long as her husband lives. But if her husband dies, she is at liberty to be married to whom she wishes. There is no right one for you. God will bring different people. Choose wisely. That means God gives you the grace to choose. But only in the Lord. So, sometimes this idolatry of the right one is also a reason why some people are not married. Because people come and ask, people come and ask, people, no, oh, it's okay, I'm waiting for the right one. I'm waiting for the right one. Understand this, that willingness is important. Number seven, the important virtue of kindness. Everyone say kindness. Now, the servant made a test to see who was the right one. So the servant says in verse 14, 
Let it be that the young woman to whom I say, please let down your pitcher that I may drink. And she says, drink and I will also give your camels a drink. Let her be the one who you have appointed for your servant Isaac. 1720, Genesis 24, okay? And the servant ran to meet her and said, please let me drink a little water from your pitcher. So she said, Rebecca, drink my Lord. Then she quickly let her pitcher down to her hand, gave him a drink. And when she had finished giving him a drink, she said, I will draw water for your camels also until they have finished drinking. Then she quickly emptied her pitcher into the trough, ran back to the well to draw water and drew for all his camels. One test the servant gave was kindness, not beauty, not degree, not Miss Nagaland, kindness. The servant is smart. The servant here is a type and a picture of the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is saying to you today, all the men who are not married, if you are looking for a future spouse, look for kindness. She was kind to the stranger. She was kind to the camels, all 10 of them. Now, how, many, how much water does a camel drink? Do you know? Conservative estimate is that camels, one camel will drink about 100 liters of water in three minutes in the desert. So 10 camels, what is that? Conservative estimate, 1,000 liters. So not only was she kind, she was pretty strong also. She drew about 1,000 liters. She was kind. She was overkind. So the servant observed intently, okay? What makes a woman attractive? And also for the women and also for the wives also right now. What makes you attractive to your husband is still the same right now. And it's good even after marriage that you are also working to attract one another. Ah, yes, this is the message right now for all the couples. Not only for the singles, all right? Proverbs 31 verse 10. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. A wife of noble character who can find. That means more than this gold ring and more than all your precious houses and cars, a noble wife is greater. What's the meaning of the word noble? The word noble or virtuous comes from a Hebrew word kayil and it means strength, full of grace, loving kindness. That's what makes a woman attractive. Listen, the servant watched her closely. That means all the guys, can you say amen guys? Watch closely. Observe people closely for this virtue, kindness. Look for character more than physical beauty. And the best place to observe character is not in a date. Do you know when you're in a dating, you're always putting your best on the plate. You will never know the character of a woman in a date or the guy also in a dating situation. You will never know. So the best way to know the character is in a group situation like fellowship, group dating, all your friends going out together, working together in a group project like the ushers, serving together in church, in groups, because that's where you will observe how she treats other people. Observe. Not how she treats you because she likes you. How does she treat the rich, the poor? How does she treat the unfashionable or underfashionable, the popular and the unpopular? Because in our culture, you might be noticing that sometimes when rich people are there, people become more friendly. And when people are poor, they talk rudely. Listen, if you're observing such things in any woman, not a good catch. Not a good catch. She lacks virtue. A virtuous woman will treat everyone the same, will be polite to all. This woman was polite to the stranger. So observe how they treat other people. Not only you, not only the rich and the powerful. Proverbs 19.14 says, Houses and wealth are inherited from parents, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. The word prudent means practical wisdom, good judgment, common sense. This is more beautiful than beauty. 1 Peter 3 verse 4 says, The incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. Look at that. The incorruptible beauty. Incorruptible beauty. That means even after marriage, you will find her beautiful when she's kind. I tell you, the inside is more beautiful than the outside. Why you need to know this men is this. Men, look for physical beauty more than external beauty. Now, question. What makes a man attractive? This is very important. Woman, what do you observe in a man? Proverbs 20 verse 6. Proverbs 20 verse 6. Most men will proclaim their own goodness, 
But who can find a faithful? The Bible says, who can find a faithful man? Not handsome, faithful. So what should you be looking for in a man? Woman, look for faithfulness. Comes from a Hebrew word, imun, which means someone you can depend upon. Dependable, trustworthy. So, what should you be looking for in a man? Look for faithfulness. If there's one quality that you need to look for, look for trustworthiness. It means somebody who keeps his word. Especially in the area of money. Is he faithful in the area of money before marriage? If he's always borrowing from you before marriage, dump him. I'm telling you the truth, dump him. We're lying to you and borrowing from you. Not just once or twice. Yeah, genuine cases are there, but every day. You're going to have difficulty in your marriage. Or if he's too thrifty, no, not too thrifty, too overspending. Whatever he gets, he just spends in clothes and partying and restaurants. That's not a faithful man. Point number eight, the need for family blessing. We know the story. Rebecca's family blessed her, prayed over her, and sent her. So in the future, if you're about to make a decision, involve your family. Because in marriage, Christian marriage, it is not only two individuals who are marrying, it is two families that are being joined together. So the family blessing is important. Yes, we know that in some cases where the family is unbelievers and that wife is a believer, you may have situations where the family does not agree to the wedding. That's fine. You can still marry. But given the circumstance of both sides being Christians and believers, it's always good to involve everyone and get everyone's blessing also because there is a blessing there. Point number nine, the principle of timing. So the scripture says there in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 32 to 35, that if you are married, now you're going to be caring about your spouse, how you will please your spouse, the man and the woman. Marriage brings a lot of responsibilities and cares, puts pressure on your time and your resources. But the Bible is saying here, if you're unmarried, you have time to please God and you have time to focus on your career. That means this, timing is important for relationships. Do not jump into a relationship while you're in school, while you're in college even, until you have settled down in a career or yes, you are exploring that, that's fine. But don't be too quick to enter into a relationship because a relationship is going to put pressure of time, attention, focus, emotions, Mental distraction in your life, which will distract you from your relationship with God and your career. So the principle of timing is important. While you are studying and you're focusing on a career, not having additional cares is wise. Focus on the Lord. Focus first on the Lord. How to please the Lord and how to build your career. The power of delayed gratification is this. That when you learn to control yourself, the physical, the mental, and the soul control is what causes you to have a higher chance of success in your life. So if you delay the gratification of your video games and your TV to study, you will have a better chance of success in your exams. If you delay the gratification of spending your money on brand clothes, on Louis Vuitton, and all the branded bags, and invest it properly, you will have more in the future. So if you delay the gratification of having a relationship right now when you are in your teens and in your college, you will have a better chance of doing well in your life because you're not distracted by all these emotional and mental disturbances. So timing is important. Point number 10, the principle of the well. Genesis chapter 24 verses 11 to 12. The servant came to the well and that's where he found the woman, the future wife of Isaac. And this is what he prayed, Lord, give me success this day. Lord, give me success this day. Give me success this day. The word success is the Hebrew word kara. And the word kara means to be at the right place at the right time. The word kara means that you chanced upon it or you happened to be there and then she was there also. The success that we are actually looking for, it depends on place and timing and the hand of God upon our lives. So prayer becomes an important part. But the principle here is this. Isaac's wife was found at the well. Moses also found his wife at another well. Why is the well important? Because in that culture, wells were a place of rest and sustenance. 
But wells were also a place of social gathering because all the people, agrarian community, shepherding community, they live in their own faraway homes. They come in the cool of the evening to kick water. That's when they meet, that's when they gossip, that's when they fellowship. We can see in the scriptures that the well is a place of rest. Even Jesus rested in Samaria at the well. So a well signifies a place of rest. What am I saying to you? You need to be in rest. Don't be anxious. Don't be so worried. You need to trust in the Lord. You need to be at rest here. With your eyes, some of you men, you need to be looking. When I say rest, I don't mean, okay, I'll just stay home and God will bring my wife to me outside my door. Knock, knock, knock. Ah, your wife is here. Rest means here. Be rested. Be trusting in the Lord. Do what is necessary on the external with your eyes. Go to fellowship. Learn some social skills. Learn some personality. Learn some manners because all of those are important. You see, because you need, instead of waiting for the right one, you be the right one. Learn some personal grooming. Those are things you need to be doing right now. So even when you are doing those things, right, and get some knowledge on money, investing houses, because all those things are important for the future. So do those things. When I say rest, I don't mean don't do anything. When I say rest, I'm talking about in your heart. Be trusting in the Lord, all right? We see in Genesis chapter 2, 21 to 22, that God created Eve when Adam was sleeping, when Adam was resting. So God is also creating the situation and the circumstance for you while you are trusting in the Lord here in your heart. But again, do the practical things. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. So go out there, mingle, fellowship. Where is the place today that is the well in a modern day context? Rebecca was at the well. Zipporah was at the well. Where is the well today? The well today is this. Do you want to know? The well is this church. The church is a place of rest. Every Sunday you come and you're resting. I'm doing all the hard work, right? You're resting and you're getting, you are getting the presence of God, the Word of God. You come to church, you're fellowshipping one another. It's a place of rest. So the best place is really the well of the church. The place where people gather and rest. The point I'm trying to say is this. Don't disconnect yourself from the body of Christ and be expecting a miracle in your life also. Walk by faith. Do what is necessary. That important discipline of even attending church on a regular basis, being part of a church community and fellowship, that is important. That is a part of how you can find a godly spouse. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. Did you know that the Bible says that blessed are those who not only hear the word, but actually do the word? There is more blessing in practicing the word than only hearing it. And I want to encourage you, therefore, to practice this word immediately. Would you also kindly comment in the comment section how you were blessed through this message? And if you have any prayer requests, feel free to text or call the numbers that are given. And there are people here that are willing to pray for you for God's blessing upon your life. And again, please like, subscribe, and share this video, and you'll be doing your part in sharing this message to the world. God bless you.